taking time out of your day. I think you find it very worthwhile. Uh, we sponsor this conference along with uh, Forty's Healthcare Advisors and Forty's Safer Seymour and Peace. And all of our firms are committed to working with providers such as yourself and, and uh, helping you provide quality care uh, while we at the same time having sustainable business models. Uh, if you get a chance to come to representatives throughout the room, uh, please feel free to talk to them and, and uh, express concerns or learn more about what we do. And so let's start with the program. Uh, to introduce our keynote speaker, I would like to introduce uh, Jeff Davis, who is the Director of Government Relations at Opera. Jeff? Thank you very much. I, I want to say thanks to Kurt for letting me know now that we get a parking pass. So I parked out at meter six blocks of the morning, so I appreciate that. Everybody knows their statue by like that. I, I called Gary yesterday and I asked him if I, I couldn't say a few words in an introduction to Cheryl Rosen. And I want to take a moment to chat a little bit about my affection and respect for Cheryl. When I started, I live in a sort of bedroom community down in Grove City, southwest Franklin County. And Cheryl and I first sort of met uh, a little more depth when I decided to run for city council down in Grove City. Cheryl was the mayor for a number of years, a very strong and effective mayor of Grove City. Uh, and so she helped. I mean, she was kind enough to sit with me, chat with me, walk through all the challenges and, and all the great things about that community. She took her time to do that, and I appreciate that. And I think uh, our friendship now. I don't want to be presumptuous and assume that the friendship is reciprocated. It's certainly on my part. And, you know, I, have, I appreciate what she did for me in that respect. And then when we talk about our system and lobbying, Cheryl has become an incredibly effective legislator. She's in leadership, and she'll mention some of those things. But I want to give you a couple of heartfelt examples of why I think Cheryl is terribly unique. One of them is the fact that she's here today. Now, when you talk with, when you visit legislators and you chat about your issues, oftentimes they'll be very receptive, very kind, because professionally you do that, but they may or may not listen, and they may or may not take that message anywhere beyond that 15, 20, 30 minutes that you speak with them. Cheryl will find today not only listens, which is an incredibly effective, and not always across the core characteristics that you'll find, she will listen to you. And what you're going to find today is not only will she speak just a few minutes, she won't presume to know everything about our system, and then she's going to sit as her schedule allows and actually listen to the presentations. And I promise you, you won't find that very often for an elected official to come and listen to your issues and take the time out of her schedule and say, you sit and actually listen to the presentation. So I really genuinely applaud that. The other piece of this puzzle is that a lot of folks they will, okay, they'll listen to you, they might say they agree with you, but they really won't consistently and persistently stick with an issue to its resolution. I promise you, if Cheryl is your friend, and I don't mean the person, if she believes in your message and believes in your issue, she will stay with it until it is accomplished. So when I use the term relentless or pit bull, I mean that affectionately and quite in a complimentary way. She will stay with it until the end. She came to our Opera Policy Committee meeting a month or two ago, maybe a little longer now. She stayed and she listened. She didn't talk. She listened to everybody with their comments, and I hope that she walked away with some understanding of our issues, but the fact that she didn't presume to know and dominate the conversation, I found incredibly refreshing, and I respected that everyone. So I think we're lucky today to have her with us. I think it was a very nice choice. And beyond my personal affection, I have an immense amount of professional respect for her. So I guess I will introduce Cheryl Rosen. Boy, those are big shoes for me to fill right now. Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here. I'm going to see if I can put this. Hopefully, you can still hear OK. Um, Jeff was very kind in his introduction, and um, you know, last week, uh, last Wednesday, a lot of you may have seen in the news, we were fortunate to have the OSU ban there. Uh, our oldest son spent five years there, and I know uh, Rep. Stenziano referred to me as a grizzly mom, so, um, you know, someone has to have passion for what we do, we just have to, and uh, 
it's much easier sometimes to put your head in the sand, but it certainly doesn't achieve what we're trying to do. And you're all dealing with some very difficult times. And I wanted to just give an example to you of a similar project that I have worked on. Uh, Jeff talked about uh, my service uh, as mayor of Grove City for 12 years. Uh, I've been fortunate, this is my third term in the Ohio House, and I serve currently as the majority whip in the Ohio House. And uh, I'm on the LSC board, uh, state and local government finance committee, which is just a key committee to be able to ask questions as I learn more and more about the challenges that you're dealing with. And Director Martin, the last time they were before me, uh, I was able to cite some numbers that did not show Ohio in a real favorable spot as far as reimbursement and things in that regard. He goes, really? And I said, yeah, that's the status on that. So, I appreciate your willingness today to, uh, to share with me the issues that you're facing. Um, on my short walk over from the Rife Center through the State House to here, I stopped by two government relations people. Uh, one had to do with a, a $16 million amendment we got in the MBR for early quality childhood uh, education because I think if we don't provide those pre-K kids with a good foundation, it's really hard for them to succeed throughout school. And uh, we had, I went through the House and the Senate, had the blessings of the administration, and I was just told the administration thinks they may be able to get federal money, but they don't know for sure. So my life is always changing too, and I wish I had more predictability and I can really relate to what you're doing. Um, and to give you an example of some of the things I have been involved in, uh, it's important as a legislator to be endorsed by good organizations. Uh, that support you, that sort of give reassurances to those people that don't know you that you do your job and you work really hard. And um, I, uh, I'll just share with you a little bit of uh, uh, background. Uh, in 2012, I introduced a bill with another representative to amend the Mental Health Parity Act in order to clarify that autism spectrum disorders are covered conditions. At the time, 32 states, including all other states in the Midwest, had enacted legislation requiring insurance coverage for autism. According to the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, autism now affects one in 68 children. In fact, we've seen a 1,000 percent increase in prevalence in the last 40 years. And there was no known cure for autism, there still isn't, but we knew 47% of those children that had that ABA coverage prior to school would end up mainstreamed in school. And it seemed like a no-brainer to me on why we needed to do that. And certainly the problems that families go through, uh, as a mother, you know, I would go to the end of this earth for our sons on what I think they, they need in their lives, and yet these families, uh, many were working two and three jobs to be able to afford the extra coverage and extra um, services uh, that their children needed to have. And divorce rate is very, very high. It doesn't, didn't seem right. And uh, I received a letter from a government relations representative uh, who shared his grandson's story. And he said his parents did not take no for an answer. They got help for their son. In the last seven years, he's undergone thousands of hours of ABA occupational speech and physical therapies. And his parents were lucky enough to qualify for a Medicaid waiver to get some financial help. They received no help from their health insurance carrier. And it just didn't seem right. And uh, this young man is, is being very successful in school now. And his grandfather just wanted to express his uh, support of what I was trying to do on behalf of autism coverage in the state. And I know that families throughout Ohio struggle on a lot of different challenges that you face with care for children, uh, for all of your family members in special circumstances. And uh, so I was really pleased on this coverage. We were able to get the governor to sign in December of 2012 uh, a legislative order mandating that this requirement would be provided, this insurance coverage would be provided uh, to the families in Ohio. But I want to tell you the other half of that. Um, me, who's been endorsed by wonderful organizations in the past, lost the endorsement of the Ohio Chamber and the NFIB as a result of, of my efforts to do what I thought was really, really important. And I'm certainly hopeful in this next election that that will change. 
we deal with a lot of people that uh, rely on speculation rather than the facts on consequences and unintended consequences. And uh, I think that's so unfortunate for people to do. So as we look at what you're facing and uh, reimbursement being among the lowest in the nation as far as what we are able to provide uh, for some of the individuals that take care of these people in special circumstances. Um, I am grateful for uh, some of the directors and members of the administration. I think that we are being heard in a lot of important ways. Uh, I can't stress enough how important it is for you to keep us in that legislature engaged and informed and educated. And um, again, I'm not sure if everyone realizes the expectations on our expertise. Uh, yesterday we dealt with um, salvage, with uh, fracking and the severance tax, and uh, veterans benefits, and it mixes from one end of the spectrum to the other. And for me, it's been really important to establish relationships and friendships with people that I trust that I know I can go to and say tell me the rest of the story on this or if we go this direction what that's going to create for you in other respects. Um, there is a, a very special friend that's here today and uh, when I was mayor we opened up some beautiful uh, care facilities in Grove City that now are going to be too big with the the new uh, anticipation of what they're trying to do to reduce these populations. So um, I just can't begin to stress enough how important it is for you to engage everyone that you can to make sure they understand the struggles and the challenges that uh, you're facing. And for anyone to think that we have the expertise in your field is absolutely ridiculous because we don't. There's no way that we can. Um, so I'm looking forward this morning to hearing from you um, the issues, the, um, the challenges, and there's also some great opportunities for us to do the right thing, but let's make sure we do them correctly. Um, I get frustrated sometimes with studies that are done repeatedly, 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 and it seems like you never see the outcome of those results. And in the same respect, I don't think we want to shoot from the hip and then five or 10 years later regret the choices that we make. So as far as telling you what's coming, I don't know for sure yet either. Um, I talked about a $16 million amendment that a month ago was 100% ready to go, and this morning I just found out it may not. So uh, I know that you have some wonderful advocates that are sharing this message in the House and the Senate. I can't stress enough how important it is to continue to do that. Um, and um, when your crystal ball becomes clear, let me know because I need that same one. And I think a lot of times the, the expectation of, of us knowing what's going to go on, uh, you know, it's a check and balance system between the House and Senate, and then the administration many times puts a whole new spin on everything. So bear with us, be patient, but communicate on what those concerns are because it is so important as we move forward with a very aggressive program right now that we don't have regrets. And I can look back in your field uh, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, that I think we wish we would have done things differently. So um, I am usually a woman a few words unless I think people are not being fair and then I, I get fired up. Um, so in a, you know, to summarize my point, uh, I can't wait to hear, again, some of the issues that you're facing with. Um, I take a lot of notes, and I will continue to advocate for what's right, not only for you, but for the people of Ohio.